welcome students the third lecture of uh, logic and distributed control system so last lecture we have discussed about the hierarchical control uh, so we have seen that in hierarchy control how uh, the computer are used or what are the contribution or how the computer can be used in the different level of hierarchy of control and at last we have understood that um, what is the meaning of distributed control system in terms of control hierarchy that is important to understand and ultimately uh, we have discussed that what is the name or uh, meaning of the name distributed control system means why it is called distributed so distributed its functions and then how or why it is called control uh, system so that also we have discussed that uh, all the uh, automation through the control is included in D DCS and also why it is called system so system means we want to mean that it is an integrated system so these things we have understood so mainly we have seen this digital con I mean, sorry the distributed control system from the point of view of hierarchical control okay now today we want to see the distributed control system from the architectural point of view okay so that we want to understand that how the distributed control system architecture has been introduced so uh, first is the evolution of dcs the control system has developed from 1930s to the present day in response of two intertwined influences what are they user needs and technological advances along with that continual growth in the size and complexity of industrial processes are the cause of this development also we have observed that the cost of raw materials and energy required to process these materials have increased substantially the labor cost involved in plant startup operation and maintenance have grown substantially these influencing factors have motivated to place a greater amount of emphasis on automation and on efforts to optimize their oper operation so this is the these are the factors by which the automation uh, the introduction of the automation is motivated the suppliers of industrial controls have been motivated to develop totally integrated plan management systems that are more than the combination of individual control monitoring and data logging system so as the plant size and the complexity are increased so as suppliers as well as the developer or as well as the user they have they have realized that something they need integrated plan management system where all the hierarchy of the control can be uh, can be accommodated or integrated uh, 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 they do not prefer the combination of individual control monitoring and data logging systems okay so this picture representing the uh, how the different technology has converged to distributed control system so there are two developments parallelly has occurred that is called discrete device control system and another is computer based control system so initially uh, uh, in 1930 you can see that first uh, uh, the development of controller has been started with the mechanical devices so that, that that's why governors and mechanical controllers so the mechanical devices are used to control then slowly uh, it has moved to the direct connected pneumatic controller so then from the mechanical uh, controllers then the development of pneumatic controllers have, has occurred so as i have i have discussed that well, how the mechanical controllers are um, uh, controllers are going to operate uh, we know that uh, the the energy energy to these mechanical controllers are the pressurized air signal so that's why it is called pneumatic devices or pneumatic controllers so the, the, there is not only the development of um, direct connected pneumatic controllers at the same time transmitter type pneumatic controllers also has been developed in the later 1940 why because we have to transmit the data or measurement data from one place means that is from the field to the control room so th that can be done using pneumatic the uh, uh, transmitter type pneumatic controllers and then 
at at late at the at at 1960 the people have come with the development of electronic devices so slowly there are several disadvantages has been observed in transmitter type pneumatic devices or controllers so slowly the people has moved to get the advantages of electronic analog controllers okay so these are the, this is one line of development and you can see that uh, and all these develop you can say that, that the controllers are continuous in nature so um, uh, at at the late 1940 we can see that there was another development which is known as a discrete control uh, and initially it was performed by uh, electromagnetic relays and stepping switches and slowly uh, it has moved to the electronic logic controllers and ultimately it um, um, it has come in the form of programmable logic controllers which is uh, completely different from the analog controllers and the programmable logic controllers uh, based on the discrete logic and ultimately they also become the part of the distributed digital control system. So we can see that the development of electronic analog controllers converge to the distributed digital control system and programmable logic controllers which is discrete control system that also converts to the discrete. So they, are, they become the part of the distributed control system. System. And also there was the development of computers in, uh, in the era of 1960 and it has come in the form of supervisory computer control system and slowly after that we have seen that there is a development called direct digital control system and it has also converged to the distributed control system uh, so or distributed digital control system. So these are the timeline for the development how the evolution of industry control technology has occurred. Okay, so these are the key milestone of the control system evolution. So now, now I am not going to read out this uh, um, evolution. You can go through that the timeline, how the different um, uh, remarkable uh, development as well as the uh, achievement has occurred uh, in the timeline from 1934 to 1975. So now traditional control system development. Before we, our, our, today's our objective is to know that how the architecture of the DCS has evolved. That actually we want to know. Last class we have we have seen that from the control point of view, how the discrete or hierarchical control or, or the um, um, control hierarchy we have seen, and then how the development of distributed control system has occurred. Now today we want to see how the architectural development has occurred and ultimately we reach to the uh, architecture of distributed control system that we want to learn. So in early discrete device control systems were distributed around the plant. So uh, all the discrete devices are distributed around the plant. It was up to the operator, actual, actually several operators to coordinate the control of many devices that made up the total process. Because you know that to control a process, total process, different control loops will be there, maybe 1000 or 2000 control loops will be there, maybe someone is flow control loop, someone will be temperature, someone will be uh, level control loop. So then if these devices, if these uh, control loops are distributed around the plant, then if they are not connected to each other, then what operator has to do now, operator to coordinate the control of many devices that made up the total processes. How they, how they did that? Now they did this by roaming around the plant and making corrections to the control devices as needed. This was feasible approach to the control of early industrial processes because the plants were small geographically and the processes were not too large or complex. When small geographically means that it is a small plant, so it is very easy to coordinate amongst the uh, operators. What are the disadvantage or what is the disadvantage of this method? Now, these, there were no mechanism for communication between controllers other than that provided by each operator to the other operators in the plant using visual and vocal means. So the, either visually and vocally the, amongst the uh, status of the control loops were communicated amongst the um, operators and then they are going to uh, uh, going to converge to a decision. Okay, so this was the traditional control system at the early stage. So next development was at 
1930s, it became more and more difficult to run a plant using the isolated loop control architecture. Okay, the emphasis on improving overall plant operations led to a movement towards centralized control or equipment room. So, some uh, control system we require such that from from the central control room, we can monitor all the control loops present in the plant. This was made possible by the development of transmitter type pneumatic system. Why transmitter is, is required? Because whatever the field devices are mounted at the field, they should measure the, um, uh, measure the process variable and that has to come to the central control room for the control computer computation or for the readout or for the visualization then after the computation of the control the the control signal again should go back to the um, uh, 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 field so this in this architecture measurements made at the process were converted to pneumatic signal at standard levels which were then transmitted to the central control location and this uh, in 1930 there was no development of electronic devices so all these measurement as well as the transmission of measurement data made by pneumatic devices and the output standard for the pneumatic devices were 3 to 15 psi okay the required control signal were computed at the location then transmitted back to the actuating devices at the process so advert what are the advantage we got compared to the earlier uh, earlier process now all of the process informations were available to the operator at the central location thus the operator was able to make better control decision and operate the plant with a greater degree of safety and economic return so now uh, the next development has occurred late 1950s and early 1960s where there was a remarkable development in the electronic devices so in the late 1950s and early 1960s the technology used to implement the centralized control architecture started to shift from pneumatic to electronic so the standard output for the electronic devices were uh, 3 to 15 15 um, uh, psi to uh, pneumatic transmitter then the electronic transmitter are used where to transmit the measurement signal as well as the control signal in the form of three uh, in the form of 4 to 20 milliampere so in the process control already you have learned that why the why the selection of in the range of 4 to 20 milliampere so one of the key objective of this shift was replacing the long rounds of tubing used in pneumatic system with the wares used in the electronic wear because you have to transmit the uh, air signal so you require a long tubing okay and if you use a long tubing then what will happen the, this change reduced the cost of installing the control system and also eliminated the time lag inherent in pneumatic system. That is the most important things for the pneumatic system that inherent time lag present because the air sheet signal when you are sending from one point to another point and if the distance is long then what will happen there will be a drop. So then uh, there, there, there definitely a certain time lag will be present from the sending point to the um, um, uh, transmitting point fine and also there are several uh, wires will be there through which the pneumatic signal has to be transmitted so it requires or it it it, it, it requires a lot of cost so both of these advantages become more significant as the plant sizes are increased so now um, uh, whether it is a pneumatic control system or it is an electronic control system, uh, at the beginning it was centralized. Uh, how it is centralized? Already it has been di discussed that there will be a central control room. The measured data will be or measured signal which is generated by the sensor. If it is electronic signal, it will be in the 4 to 20 milliampere has to be sent to the central control room. And then there the, uh, the there some uh, the, the operator interface was there to see the, uh, the data 
okay the, some data loggers will be there maybe or some strip chart were there or some analog meters were there to see the variables and here the controllers were there which will calculate the control signal based on the set point which is given by the operator and the measured data and then then again the signal uh, that is 4 to 20 milliampere signal which is generated by the controller has to be transmitted to the field such that the final control element like valve can be operated. So it may be a pneumatic device or it may be a electronic controllers or the electronic transmitters but the architecture of the control system was centralized. Fine. And um, uh, at that time, another concept has come, which is known as split controller structure. What is the meaning of that? So suppose you have the process and you have the control room and this process and control room has been connected either by pneumatic lines or by electronic lines. And what is the meaning of split controller structure? Now, another consequence of the centralized control architecture was the development of the split controller structure. In this type of controller, the operator display section of the control controller panel is mounted in the control room and computing section is located in a separate rack in the adjoining equipment room okay so you have the uh, controller uh, room i mean so cent central uh, computer room or control room and it is divided by two parts one will be uh, separated for the computing section another for another part where the operator will sit to see the uh, display uh, to monitor the different variables uh, in the plant fine then uh, at the same time there was a development in the programmable logic controller because this controller this pneumatic as well as the electronic controllers the nature was analog so people have felt that in certain situation the analog controllers are inefficient and then the programmable, they feel that there is a need of programmable logic controller, which is discrete control, which is the nature of the control is discrete. The discussion to this point has focused on continuous of analog control devices in which both the inputs and outputs to the controllers are very continuously over a selected range, either in 1 to 5 volts or 4 to 20 milliampere or 3 to 15 psi. Similar developments have taken place in the realm of sequential logic control devices in which the inputs and outputs to the controllers take only one of the two discrete states that is on off or um, in terms of voltage with 0, 0 or 24 volts. These devices generally used in controlling the certain types of pumps, motor or valves in a process. They are used in safety override system that operate in parallel to an backup the continuous system describes above. Okay, so as I told you that they have the special use where uh, they have failed that there is a need of programmable logic controller. Okay, the original versions of this control uh, of uh, the logic systems were implemented using simple electronic devices such as relays and stepping switches. So initially this development has occurred with electromagnetic relays. Later, the development of solid state electronic modules allowed logic system to be implemented using the same level of technology. In the early 1970s, a sophisticated device known as programmable logic controllers PLC was developed to implement sequential logic systems. This device is significant because it was one of the first special purpose computer based devices that could be used by someone who was familiar with relay logic diagram but was not necessarily a computer programmer. Means it was so simple that the, those who are the old operator uh, habituated to operate the electromagnetic relay operated devices, they are uh, very much uh, very much acquainted with the new development that is programmable logic controllers because they have kept the similar kind of um, uh, arrangement uh, in the programmable uh, logic controllers. Okay, so this transition of the uh, um, development uh, has not given pain to the operators uh, who were convenient to operate the old devices. So that's why it has been written. It has been written that 
though it was computer based devices but could be used by someone who was familiar with relay logic diagrams but was not necessarily a computer programmer so well designed this plc controllers were all of the version of sequential logic system have been implemented in direct connected distributed architectures as well as in the centralized one so this plc become the part of as well as the, uh, as well as for the centralized architecture as well as the distributed one plc and network plcs are considered to be a special case of general distributed control system architecture okay now computer based control system developments went to the supervisory control level so in addition to the evolution of the traditional type of control system described above a more recent evolution of computer based process control system has been taking place uh, but uh, at the first application of computer to the industrial processes was in the areas in of the plant for the monitoring and for the supervisory control that already we have discussed when we have discussed about the hierarchy of control this innovation provided an automatic data acquisition capability in these applications analog controllers were still the primary means of control the computers used uh, for um, uh, for the data logging means the available input data to calculate the set points that correspond to the most efficient plant operating condition so computer not used for as a controller they are used for the data acquisition these are uh, and set point calculation and whatever the set point calculated by the computers these set points then when sent to the analog controllers which perform the actual closed loop control function of supervisory control computers are the display log plant data uh, provided by the operator fine and then uh, we see we saw that the development of direct digital control the next step in the evolution of the computer process control was the use of computer in the primary control loop itself in uh, in a mode usually known as uh, direct digital control in this approach process measurements are read by the computer directly computer calculates the proper control outputs then sends the output directly to the actuating devices for security a backup analog control system was provided to ensure that process could be run automatically in the event of a computer failure it suffers from the computer hardware reliability problem this kind of centralized structure despite these problems it demonstrated many of the advantages digital um, advantages digital as uh, as over analog control what are they the tuning of the parameter set points do not try to drift when you are using the ddc and the control loop tuning parameters can be set adaptively to track changing operating conditions and uh, then um, uh, we are now i think ready to understand the system architecture so as a result of the developments described two industrial control system architecture came to dominate the market by end of 1970s means first we have seen that uh, so now here i i want to summarize the things what we have learned till now so we have seen the development of pneumatic controllers then uh, uh, controllers as well as the uh, transmitters then we have seen that electronic con controllers and the uh, uh, transmitters then parallelly we have seen the need of plc and then we have understood that first the computer is used as a supervisory control system to a uh, change the set point or for the data logging not at the for the control purpose then we have seen that uh, there 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 was a development which is called discrete digital control system where a, a centralized comp uh, computer system used to do all the job okay so now uh, we are ready to understand the system architecture so here we are telling that as a result of the development described by two industrial control system architecture came to dominate the market at the end of 1970s the first architecture is the hybrid one making use of a combination of discrete control hardware and computer hardware in a central location to implement the required control function in this approach first level or local control of the plant unit operation is implemented by using discrete analog and 
sequential logic controllers like PLCs. Panel board instrumentation connected to these controllers is used for the operator interfacing and located in the central control room. And there must be a supervisory computer and associated data acquisition system are used to implement the planned management functions including the operating point optimization, alarming, data logging and historical data storage and data retrieval. So how the architecture is let us see so this is the architecture so the uh, the, 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 the this is the process the process in the process you will find that the sequential uh, control uh, subsystems analog control subsystems are going to interact with the process directly and there will be a data acquisition subsystem and uh, there must be a supervisory computer and uh, all the data uh, data what it what it is acquisized uh, through the process is is interface or connected with the supervisory computer okay and to monitor the sequential logic control system as well as the analog control system there must be a panel board instrumentation which is going to facilitate the um, uh, the operators and also with the supervisory computers some video terminal units are there also the printers are there through which also the operator can interface but you see here the mixture of control controllers are there means someone is discrete control someone is analog control so that's why the supervisory computer to interact with this supervisory means uh, interact with the sequential control as well as the analog control system require a interfacing hardware so the last thing it has been shown that the the computer also used to drive its own operator interface usually consisting one or more video display units which is known as video. A substantial amount of interfacing hardware is required. Why? Now, to tie the analog as well as the sequential control equipment to each other as well as to the supervisory computer. Okay. Another development as we told that there is a central computer system architecture. What is that? In this architecture, all system functions are implemented in high performance computer hardware in a central location. In general, redundant computers are required so that the failure of a single computer does not start the whole process down. Operator interfacing for the plan management function is provided using videos that we have already understood in the last in, in, uh, structure and operator interface for first level continuous and sequential closed loop control also may be implemented using videos. Optionally, the computers can be interfaced to standard panel board instrumentation so that operator in charge of first level control can use a more familiar set of control and display hardware. So architecture is like this. So there will be a computer A and computer B. So all the inter, uh, all the uh, data which is uh, interfaced to the process are coming through the process interface because computer you may know that they are digital in nature so you require a DDA converter but it is all, all the calculations are done by a central computer so you require another computer uh, which is uh, which is as a backup okay now there are several uh, videos mass storage printer or, and can also the panel board instrumentation or panel board hardware will be there which is interface to the peripheral uh, through peripher peripheral interfacing so this is this architecture is known as central computer architecture so first architecture we have learned which is hybrid system architecture second thing we have learned that is called uh, that, uh, that is called uh, central computer architecture and uh, what is the difference between these two architectures now note that both the above systems use computers the main difference between the two system is the location of the implementation of the first level continuous and sequential control functions and then finally we will come to arrive to distributed control system architecture now the biggest disadvantage of the centralized uh, 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 centralized computer control architecture is that the central processing unit re represents a single point of failure that can shut down the entire process if it is lost two approaches were developed to overcome the reliability problem either a computer analog control system is used to back up the computer 
computer system or another computer used is as a hot standby to take over if the primary control computer fails. So either you have to keep a analog control system as a backup or you can keep another computer as a backup. Okay, either approach results in a system significantly more expensive. Another problem with this computer based system has been that has been noticed that the software required to implement all the functions is extremely complex. Okay, this is the natural result of an architecture in which a single CPU is required to perform a variety of functions in real time input scanning data base updating control algorithm computation logging long term storage man machine interface so these were the requirement finally the centralized system is limited in its capability to accommodate change and expansion so if you want to change uh, or if you want to expand the expand the control system which is centralized which is extremely difficult because of this problem it became clear to both user and system designer that a new architectural approach was needed Control system engineers had been sketching out the concept of distributed system composed of digital control and communication elements since 1960s. But the distributed system architecture become practical and it is uh, accelerated when the microprocessor was introduced in 1970. Supporting technology also become available like solid state memory, integrated circuit chips, display system, color CRT displays also came. In the software area also there was tremendous development, structured design techniques, modular software packages and new online diagnostic concept. So all these factors as well as the need has accelerated to the development of distributed control architecture. So generalized DC architecture now we are going to learn. The devices which is used in the architectures are grouped into the three categories. What are they? And, uh, uh, some devices you will find that that interface directly to the process to be controlled or monitored. Some devices you will find that uh, that perform the high level human interfacing and computing function. And some devices you will find that they provide the means of communication between the other devices. So these, these are the main uh, constituent of the architecture uh, of DCS. Uh, and this is the pictorial representation. So here you can see that this is the process uh, transducer and actuators, those who are responsible to produce the measured data or they are actually connected with the process directly. So whatever the measurement data is produced by the plant, they are uh, going to the local control unit and whatever the control has been executed, it is coming back to the processes. And these are several local control will, local control unit will be there depending on the requirement. And there may be data input output devices also will be there. Also this thing data input output units are also can be interfaced with using low level human interface. And then some high level human interface as well as the computing devices will be there which is in uh, which is connected with this local control unit through a shared communication facilities and also there will be a computer interface devices and uh, which is interfaced with the general purpose computer so let us try to understand what are the uh, functions of each of the unit used in this generalized dcs architecture so the first thing is the lo local control unit so let us see where it is sitting here local control unit what is the use of local control unit now the smallest collection of hardware in the system that can be closed loop control the lcu interfaces directly to the process they are going to interface or they are going to interact directly to the processes okay and then you are finding that the local control unit are connected with the low level human interface what is the use of low level human interface now a device that allows the operator to or instrument engineer to interact with the local control unit for changing the set point control modes control configuration or tuning the parameters 
and low level human interface uh, devices interface directly to the processes operator oriented hardware at this level called a low level operator interface and instrument engineer oriented hardware called the low level engineering interface so the two level of interfacing can be done <coughs> then data input output units let us see where the data input output so data input output they are also going to interact with the process directly so what is the function what are the functions of uh, di or ou means data input output unit a device that interfaces to the process solely for the purpose of acquiring or outputting data it performs no control function and also with the data input output some high level human interface is uh, connected you see not only with the data input output you will find that uh, with the local control unit also uh, the high level human interface is connected through a shared communication facility so come now we should discuss about the high level human interface what is the work of it the collection of hardware that perform functions similar to the LLHI low level human interface but with increased capability and user friendliness what are um, what are they now it interfaces to the other devices only over the shared communication facilities so operator in oriented hardware at this level is called high level operator interface and instrument engineer oriented hardware called high level engineering interface and then we have the high level computing devices also what is the use of that the collection of microprocessor based hardware that performs the plant management function traditionally performed by plant computer it interfaces to other devices only over the shared communication facilities and also there is a computer interface device a collection of hardware that allows an external general purpose computer to interact with other devices in the dcs using shared communication facilities and uh, so here one thing important thing you can observe that along with this all components most important thing is the shared communication facility so that's why in this course we will give a focus on industrial communication systems that how with the shared communication facility what are the standard of communication available in the industry that we are also going to discuss in this course so what is the use of shared communication facilities one or more level of communication hardware and associated software that allow the sharing of data among all devices in the distributed system shared communication facilities do not include dedicated communication channel between specific devices means it is shared by among all the devices uh, present in the architecture of dcs a vital importance of the design of a dcs are the packaging and the electrical power system so packaging as well as the power uh, to these all devices are important uh, uh, important part of generalized dcs so now now we can conclude with the comparison with with the three architectures what the architectures are, we have learned hybrid architecture central computer architecture and distributed architecture so they can be um, uh, uh, compared in terms of scalability and expandability hybrid architecture good due to the modularity central computer architecture poor very limited range of system size and distributed good due to modularity control capability which is limited by analog and sequential logic hardware in case of hybrid ar architecture full digital control capability you can get central computer but uh, <clears throat> this can be also can be uh, can be achieved in distributed architecture that is full digital control capability operator interfacing capability which is limited by panel board instrumentation in case of hybrid architecture digital hardware provides significant improvement for large system in central computer architecture and digital hardware provides improvement for full range of system size in case of digi distributed architecture uh, then integration of system functions poor due to very variety of products in case of hybrid architecture full or all functions performed by central computer in central computer architecture functions integrated in a family of products in distributed architecture significance of single point failure low due to modularity which is high in central computer architecture low due to modularity in distributed architecture and uh, installation cost high due to discrete wearing and large volume of equipment in hybrid architecture medium subs 
control room and equipment room space but uses discrete wearing and in case of distributed architecture the low saving the both wearing cost and equipment space and uh, most important in the industry is the maintainability which is uh, uh, which is uh, very difficult in case of hybrid architecture medium in case of central architecture and excellent in case of distributed architecture so at this point i will conclude here uh, the lecture 3 that uh, by by doing the summarization that here we have understood that architecture wise how the development has occurred to reach the distributed control architectures and also we have pointed out what are the several features as well as the components are present in the distributed control architectures. Thank you.